So I'd like to tell you a story of the Rebbe of Ponovich, Zecher Sadiq Vekadosh Tebracha. He used to travel around the world to collect money for his yeshiva. And one time he was in Frankfurt, and the person that he was staying by, his name was Rabbi Yaakov Rosenheim, Allah Shalom. So Rabbi Yaakov Rosenheim tells the Rebbe of Ponovitz, you know, Rabbi, why don't you just sit over here in the room that I designated for you? Sit down, learn Torah. Instead of going and collecting money, don't worry. We'll collect money for you. We'll send shalihim. In fact, I'll call all the hashirim, all the wealthy individuals to my house, and they'll come in and they'll give you an adabah. Why should you burden yourself? Why should you trouble yourself to, to take away from your Torah learning and go solicit and, and bring money? He says, you know what? That's a good idea. So people, surely... Uh, slowly but surely, people were bringing him nidabot, people were bringing him uh, nice, uh, handsome donations. So there was one ashir that they wanted to get, they wanted to target. You know how every, in every keila, there's one ashir that you want to get. If you get that guy, you know, you're set. If a shul has that one guy, the shul is set because that guy will fulfill, will fill all the, all the hisranot. Everything that's lacking, he'll fill it. So they're trying to get this guy and they call him to the house and he tells the Rebbe of Ponovitz, look, Rabbi, I'd love to help you. I'd love to hear your, your story and see the picture of the yeshiva. But I'm in a rush. As you know, I'm a man of great business dealings and I, I don't have really time to talk. If you want, Rabbi, if you want, tomorrow morning I'm catching the train at 8 o'clock. If you're there before I embark on the train, we'll talk. You'll show me the picture of the yeshiva. I'll give you a handsome donation. Tomorrow, Rabbi. Eight o'clock, okay? So Rabbi of Ponovitz says, yes, of course, why not? So the Rabbi of Ponovitz goes to sleep that night, banking on tomorrow I'm going to get a very nice nedaba. He wakes up the next day at seven o'clock. And he knows it's going to take him time to go to the train station. At the same time, he still has to pray shahrit. And he's saying to himself, how could it be? Every single morning I wake up at five o'clock, six o'clock. How could it be? I woke up this time at seven o'clock. What should I do? He's mitla bitch right now, which means he, he's, in a, he's in a dilemma right now. Should I go pray first? Should I go pray shahrit first? Or should I go to the ashir? On the one hand, I have to pray shahrit because the halakha says you have to pray before you do any business dealings. On the other hand, you know, if I miss this guy, it's a very nice donation he'll give me. He says to himself, you know what? I'll go pray shahrit and after Shahrit, I'll go to the train station. If the guy's still there, he's there. If not, I did what I had to do. I did my hishtad loot. But first and foremost, I have to do... How are you? Good to see you. But first and foremost, I have to go and pray Shahrit. Fine. He goes and prays Shahrit. Now he's seeing at the time is 7.45, 7.50. He's making his way to the train station. He gets there at 8.30. He sees that the train left. He says to himself, Okay, what am I going to do? So he sits on the bench over there because he's very tired. He sits on the bench. He's sitting there for half an hour. It's nine o'clock. He's about to leave. All of a sudden, he sees the ashir, the rich man, running to him, panting. Rabbi, I'm so sorry. Please, please forgive me. Rabbi, how are you? How are you? Please, Rabbi, please, please forgive me. So the rabbi says, it's okay, what happened? He's like, you I had an emergency. You know, unexpected, unexpected uh, events happened. I couldn't make it. So the rabbi said, I also had unexpected events happen. But, but it's okay, don't worry. He told him the whole thing. So the, the rich person tells him, no, no, Rabbi, it's not kabod of Torah. You didn't have to come. But I told you to come. So you didn't have to come. It's my fault. I didn't have any kabod of Torah for you. But please, Rabbi, here, the donation that I wanted to give you, I'm making it double just because, you know, I took up your time. Here, Rabbi, he gives him a very nice check. So the Rabbi of Ponovitz says like this to himself when he leaves. He says like this. Imagine I would have left, skipped out on Shahrit, right? I would have left. I would have gone to the train station. I would have been there, waited from 7 o'clock until... Because when did the guy show up? 9 o'clock. I would have waited from 7 to 9, thinking the guy's never going to come and leave. When is the guy going to show up? At 9 o'clock. He's going to show up, go on the next train. I'm missing out on my donation and shahrit. Over here, I got the shahrit and double the donation. Because when you live with Hashem, there's no such thing as... I missed the boat, I missed the train, I missed this guy, I didn't see him, I should have, no, no, no. When you would live with Hashem, it's in od mi everything that goes on in your life is predetermined, determined, the footsteps that you take, Hashem knows very well, better than you, exactly how to run the show, as we said many times, let Hashem run the show, let Hashem control His world, 
all you have to worry about is am I reciprocating, like we said, am I reciprocating enough? Am I giving Hashem enough to reciprocate the amount of benevolence uh, and, and, and chesed that He's giving me?